What's up, you bunch of legends, and welcome back to another video. A video I'm super excited to make. Uh, we've got, oh, they're reversing by some subscribers that came by to say hi. But we've also got my friend Romain, Hello. who's here. Hello. Hello, I am Romain. <laughs> I am a French guy. And uh, normally, I realize some video about the tech product. But uh, today, I'm uh, with you, Seb. With the car. With this baby. With the baby. <laughs> No, Romain is one of, uh, one of my best friends in the world and we've been mates since we went to school together and we both got into the YouTube game around the same time and we actually rekindled our friendship through YouTube. So it's awesome now being back together. So he usually does tech reviews in French, but today he's brought a car lent by Ford, uh, Ford France. It is a Mustang Bullet. Super, super cool car, super rare. So I wanted to share it with you guys and Romain's very kindly gonna let us have a little go. So this thing is an homage towards Steve McQueen's car in the film Bullet, um, which was around 50 years ago. And it's a car that's completely made to kind of commemorate Steve McQueen and that movie. So it's finished in the exact same spec down to the little details, such as there being no logos. So there were no logos in the car in the film purely because Ford weren't prepared to pay to have a product placement in the movie. So Steve McQueen said, just take their logos off if they're not gonna pay, have the car in it anyways. And they've even stayed true to themselves on that and removed the logos from this one. The only place you can see the logo is on the wheels. It's pretty cool. He's put the sunglasses on, now things are serious. <laughs> on, off, on. Yeah. And then we got the bullet logo back here. So it's an absolutely stunning spec. So it's in this dark olive green. I'm not sure if it comes across on camera properly, but like really, the, like, really nice. Uh, the, the last iPhone. Like the last iPhone. Yeah, that's very true. Actually like the one I'm filming on right now. It's like that dark olive green, iPhone green. Uh, and then it's got translucent white lights here at the back. It's got those classic looking alloys, um, which really commemorate the, uh, the old car. It's got a slightly extended front splitter, which is finished in plastic not carbon just purely because it's more convenient and also price wise we'll talk about that in a second it's got a few touches most things are blacked out such as the grill but there are a few chrome touches like i'll show you around we've got these grills here blacked out which are purely aesthetic they don't actually serve a purpose they don't go anywhere but they look cool we've got the red calipers attached to some brembo steel brakes massive calipers no carbon ceramics available on this one we're running michelin pilot sport 4s's and absolutely stunning now the chrome comes across again around um, the windows and i think that's a really really nice touch they've done it really well now what makes this car cool obviously is the engine and we'll talk about that when we get inside but is also the practicality of this car yeah. because we've got <laughs> an actual boot in which we've put my ride which i ride around um in monaco because driving around monaco in summer is a nightmare so i ride this electric a scooter around but look at the size of this boot for a car which punches out 464 horsepower that is an impressive sized boot uh, and not only do you have a boot you've also got if i open it up here you have two real back seats now to demonstrate this i'm going to ask romain to hop into the back of the car oops there we go now you need to just pull the seat back uh, and there we go he's in oh someone wants to drive sorry i'm just going to lock you in but as you can tell you can fit a guy, I think he's 1 meter 80 odd. How tall are you? 1 meter? 1 meter 86. 1 meter 86, yeah. so yeah, one, nearly 190. Um, so that's what, like 6'1", six, 6 foot? Yeah, around 6, yeah, 6 foot, something like that. Um, so, also, ah, it's such a pain, you need two people to do this. Ready? <laughs> there we go. So you can use that either to put bags or if you have, you know, friends that you need to take back from a dinner, it's not a long term rear seat, but it is a good spot to have in case you need to help your friends out and take them back from a dinner or something. Now, if we get inside now, Mustangs traditionally have been known um, to have, you know, not the sweetest looking interiors and the modern ones. It's kind of where they were let down because obviously the price point of this car, this one with options, you're talking around 60,000 euros for effectively a top of the line Mustang. Um, now you can tell you've also got the bullet logo here rather than the Mustang logo. Now, so 60,000 euros, they're going to be cut somewhere compared to like S-Class coupes or different four-seater coupes of this type. But I think in this generation, they've really, really nailed it. So you've got a mix of leather and plastic, but really nicely kind of put together. And then you've got this kind of aluminium finish around the air vents, um, which is really nice and kind of goes with the whole bullet aspect. See the logo right there. Um, really nicely put together. Now... 
The important things to remember is we have a naturally aspirated V8, just under 500 horsepower, 464 to be precise, linked to a manual six-speed gearbox. This car is not available in anything other than manual, which means it's a real, it's a real driver's car. And you've even got a traditional handbrake. So proper, proper car. You've got the three pedals down here, which are pretty well distanced, um, a, little, a little far away, but you know, you can... You can still do a bit of heel and toe and a lot of technology. So whilst it is traditional, they've mixed that traditional side of things with the modern touch so nicely. So whilst you've got that Brunty V8, you've got the manual, you've also got a fully digital dash, for example. Now to do that, foot on the clutch, foot on the brake, that green button lights up on the start button right there. And then... It starts up. It struggled a bit there. I think it's because the battery, the car's been on. Oh, yeah. Or it's because just before you put... Oh, yeah, yeah. We did some revs. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do too many revs. You'll hear it when we drive it. But, um, no, this thing is awesome. I can take it if you want. Oh, yeah. You want to do it? To do the same. Okay, just a, little, just a few. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. It sounds so good. I mean, that is literally the American national anthem coming out the rear end of this thing. Now, let's talk about this digital dash because you do have a lot of options. So, you got these buttons right here, um, and then you got a magical button here, little horse, and then you can go through all your different modes. So, for example, here you can change, it's all in French, but I don't know if you could hear the difference, but the exhaust completely shut down there. You can put it back in normal sport or track mode for the car, and that kind of you know, sharpens it up, manages the traction control and different things like that. Uh, you've got your cruise control controlled through here, your nav, and loads of different, your volume, and then this is your voice control, voice command, and to go through the different menus that you have in that central part of the digital dash. And so really nice, 56 kilometers an hour yeah. average speed. You're loving life, aren't you? Look at you. <laughs> uh, and then what else do we have? So again, everything can be controlled through screen. So this is about them combining modern and old school. Everything can be done through screen, so as you saw with the traction control systems, or you've got traditional buttons, so you can choose how you want it. For example, even for the for the AC, you can either do it through the screen here, or you've got the actual button. So it's, they've really nicely kind of judged how to make this car modern whilst also keeping it for the true you know, kind of petrol heads who really want to be able to see, you know, like the new Panameras or things like that. Sometimes I feel that too much focused on buttons you need to go through too many menus to be able to find what you want whereas i actually prefer it when it's more analog like this you've got heated and cooled seats which is lovely on a hot day like today it's 25 degrees it's actually not as much as i expected um so lovely to be able to have that and then just the little details like the white gear shifter super super nice so absolutely lovely interior even better looking exterior and but such a cool sports. story Oh yes, she is connected. Yeah, the car so is connected to an app. So it's I have a the technology is nuts. Yeah, to know where is my car in the real time. That's insane. Yeah. So you can see, you can also see your fuel, yep. how much fuel you have left, how, your tire pressures, your odometer. Oh, it's only got eighteen hundred kilometers, about a thousand miles. Yeah. Oil so life, ah, everything. You have a classical car with the lastest, uh, yeah, latest technology. Yeah, that is epic. Yeah, and they've done it well. They've judged. That's a fine line to walk, I feel. And a lot of brands maybe don't walk it quite as well, where you're trying to combine historical kind of aspects to the car, um, whilst ooh, someone's coming past, uh, whilst also giving it that modern touch. And I feel like they've they've done it pretty well. Roman, shall we drive? Let's go. Let's do it. Can I drive? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's give this thing a go. Accelerating in this thing is like you've eaten a whole burger in one bite. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That noise. As I said earlier, that is the American national anthem. There is nothing which makes me think of America more than a green bullet Mustang shouting in the way this thing does. Now, very interesting driving experience because it's a Mustang and you can tell it was mainly developed for those big straight American roads, which is fine. I mean, now we're on like a dual carriageway and it feels fantastic, but it is quite big and you can feel that there is a certain weight to it. We've got our um, 
all the warnings coming up because this car is really technologically advanced. It gets a lot of looks as well. Everyone's staring to see what it is. And you described it well. This isn't the kind of car which shows like, oh yes, I'm um, I'm like here to show you how much you know money I have, or it's not really a show-offy car. When you drive this around, people kind of respect you and they're like, yes, you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about, and you're driving a cool car because a Mustang Bullet, there's something so glamorous and cool and kind of badass about it. Oh, the brakes are lovely, these steel brakes on the road, I mean steel brakes, there's no real need for the carbon ceramics unless you're really going to be thrashing it. And they've got such good feel, uh, these brakes, that they're really communicative and the pedal is really nicely placed close to the accelerator. The steering, I am in sport mode now, so it weightens itself up a little bit more. But um, for my liking, it's still a little bit too light, these modern electric steerings, but it's still very nice. I mean, it doesn't take too much away from the, uh, from the experience. What is so cool is through this shifter, short throw shifter like this with the pedals placed good for some heel and toe it's lovely really really old school it's just got such like a well i'm bullish feeling to it like yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know what you were gonna say there but no it is oh it's so cool look you go down the short throw gearbox really does make a difference and that noise i hope it comes across on on camera enough but it just sounds so good and you can get to a chaff guy like this it's just so badass. Now, the, um, what they've done quite well is this digital dashboard. So you've got all the advantages of a digital dashboard of having uh, all these different informations when you need them in front of you. Yet, they've done it in a way which it still looks fairly analog. Really well done. I, I really feel that the thing they've nailed the most with this line, with this car, is walking that line of keeping the history, keeping the story behind it, whilst having it adequately modernized. Um, they've done that really, really well. Now, a few things is it is very big because it was mainly developed for those American roads. Um, it does feel big. It does feel heavy when you're going around the corners. And it feels, it's a, it's a badass, bad boy car. So it feels like the back end kind of wants to come and bite your head off whenever you put your foot down a bit. But that's kind of cool. I quite like that. But, you know, it's no, um, it's, it's no track day kind of car. It's more cruise along PCH yeah. in LA and enjoy yourself. And um, for me, it's not possible to, to buy um, a car like a Ford Mustang. Yeah. It, if you don't have a Ford Mustang, it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not possible There's to... There's nothing quite like yeah. it. You were saying earlier, like, like AMGs, yeah. AMGs make that kind of badass muscle car noise. But, but there's something about it being linked with the Mustang yeah. where you go, this is it. This is the real deal. I have the history with me. Yeah, and exactly. I'm driving a, a piece of automotive history. Um, and as you said, it's kind of like a Ferrari. Nothing will quite give you the feel of a Ferrari because the Ferrari is the real deal. And you know, as much as you can hate on Ferrari, and a lot of people do, and, and Ferrari as a company have made many stupid mistakes and, and there's so many negative sides to them, but yet it's Ferrari and it's so special. Now Mustang, it's Mustang. And you're driving something which is irreplaceable and no matter how much people try and replicate it, They'll always be the real deal and there'll always be cars which aren't quite that. And this is the ultimate entity kind of incorporating that into its DNA. And uh, they've done such a good job with it. And finally, I feel the interior is up to date and the interior is kind of following a, the history, the character and the looks of the car on the outside. Now you've, they finally put it with an interior which kind of matches up to those things. So they've really, really done a good job with this. It's a shame it's so rare, but that's what makes it special as well. So no, they've done it really, really well. I was actually there at the launch of this car and this is the first time I get to drive one. And it is true that, I mean, but the bullet, um, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna drive any Mustang, I think this is probably the coolest <laughs> yeah, for one. Sure. Like I'm sure the Shelby 350s and stuff are probably yeah. slightly more, you know, raw, but this is the coolest one. I have drive a GT 4050. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, oh, wow. Like a dragster, it's... Yeah, the more powerful versions <laughs> yeah. of this are unreal. But there's just something about Steve McQueen and this car and the story behind it with it being from the film which makes it, ah, oh, it's so cool. It's, you can drive a modern Aston and it'll be better in every way than an old one like a DB5, but you're still just so much cooler in the DB5. That's kind of, there's a, there's a side of that 
with this car. But yeah, it is awesome. Right, we're going to get into town, and because this car is quite big, I'm going to put the cameras off, focus on driving it there. But thank you, Romain, for letting me drive this car. Really, really cool. And we're going to arrive at the port because there should be a pretty cool boat yeah. that I want to show you guys as well cool. for the outro of this. Well, it, it fits in very, very nicely here, right next to this. So I was hoping we could actually go all the way over there, How but they've closed it down. Like this, you can put in this box. You could, you could put a lot of these in there. And, and I think that costs, I think it was $500 million. So you could buy a lot of Mustangs for the price of that. But it is the biggest privately owned yacht by gross tonnage and interior space in the world. is uh, is pretty nuts. But uh, thank you for letting me drive this. Thank you Ford France as well for ensuring it so that I could drive it. Um, and it's been pretty awesome. Romain, thank you so Bye. much. If you guys speak French and you want to learn about tech, his uh, channel is going to be down below and his Instagram as well. Awesome photos there. And uh, if you guys aren't yet subscribed to this channel, thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and I'll be seeing you again very, very soon for another video just like this. Cheers guys. Bye-bye.